Prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed solid cancer in men beyond skin cancers. In Australia last year, there were almost 30,000 new diagnoses of prostate cancer. One of the most challenging aspects that men experience through this journey beyond being told they have a prostate cancer diagnosis is being left with the decision of how best to manage their disease. Should they have surgery or should they have radiotherapy? In this video, I wanted to highlight for you in my experience as a urologist and director of the prostate clinic over the last 20 years, three of the key main reasons why you should not have radiotherapy. Now, at this point, I do want to disclaim that both surgery and radiotherapy are very effective treatment options for the management of prostate cancer. And through this video, I am not saying one is better than the other. I want to highlight for you three reasons that some men may decide not to have radiotherapy as their primary treatment choice. For those of you new here, my name is Dr. Charles Chabert. I'm a urologist and have been looking after men with prostate cancer for around 20 to 25 years. As always, if you get benefit from this discussion, please leave a comment, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Now, one of the most emotive and challenging times for men going through a prostate cancer diagnosis is getting beyond that initial reaction to having cancer itself. Beyond the emotional to toll of being given a prostate cancer diagnosis, the next stressful decision that men need to come to terms with is how are they gonna manage their disease? Are they gonna opt for surgery or are they going to have radiotherapy? Now, one of the big differences really between these two treatments is in the timing of side effects. If men opt to have surgery, well, things happen immediately and then that man and his body begin to recover progressively with time. We can prepare men for surgery by sending them to a physiotherapist to prepare the pelvic floor to facilitate as early return as possible of urinary control. But with radiation treatment, the opposite is true. Now, radiotherapy does not involve a big operation and a, a stay in hospital for a night or two. Radiotherapy involves, for many men, just driving yourself to the radiation center, having a treatment which lasts for around 10 to 15 minutes per day, and there are varying time frames of treatment. Historically, it used to be six to seven weeks, the standard treatment currently is four weeks, so four times five treatments per week, Monday to Friday for four weeks. There is evolving dose escalation where we give a slightly bigger dose across a fewer number of treatments that could actually be delivered within two weeks. But for many men, the side effects from radiotherapy happen late. You feel fine through the treatment course itself, but side effects can gradually evolve beyond treatment and can actually persist for months, if not years, afterwards. Urinary issues such as rushing or frequency of urination, loose stool or diarrhea. Sometimes men have blood in their stool or blood in their urine. These things are gradual and progressive, as I've said, and some men can actually lose control of urination and become incontinent, but it can happen several years following the treatment itself. The technical term for bladder damage and also bowel damage is radiation cystitis and radiation proctitis, respectively. And it basically means that there are changes to the lining of both of these structures, the bladder and the bowel, that can cause bladder irritability, bowel irritability, and also some blood or bleeding, which can be at times heavy from those two areas. Now, reason number two why you may choose not to have radiotherapy is that if you do have localized radiotherapy, salvage treatment is harder. Now, you may be aware if you elect to have surgery, if there is local recurrence of someone's prostate cancer, that man can have salvage radiotherapy to mop up a cancer cell that could be in that area. Now, if you have radiation treatment as your primary treatment to your prostate, then we are gun shy, as it were, 
to remove someone's prostate. Now, after radiation treatment, the prostate itself it shrinks in size, it becomes very scarred or fibrotic, and it becomes adherent to the tissues adjacent to it. And the most problematic of those is the rectum or the bowel, which adheres or sticks onto the back wall of the prostate, such that if men require or proceed down the pathway of a salvage radical prostatectomy, the main issues that we experience are a very high probability of incontinence, and there is a not insignificant risk of about 40% of damaging the bowel itself. If men have a bowel injury, they do need a colostomy, which is a, a diversion or bag on the skin to allow things to heal. To the point where a salvage radical prostatectomy is rarely offered for men if they have local recurrence after surgery because it is fraught with a significant risk of complications. And in fact, there are very few centers that actually offer salvage radical prostatectomy. So it's important to be aware currently that if you do have radiotherapy as your primary treatment, we are limited with our options for salvage treatment if there's local recurrence. At this point, have you had prostate cancer? Have you had a treatment? Are you weighing up the pros and cons? If you have a comment or question or a story that you'd like to share with our audience, please leave it in the comment section down below. Okay, now what is reason number three? Well, reason number three is a gradual change in sexual function. Now, sexual function is two things. It's erections and it's ejaculation. Now, in the same way that there can be slower changes in bowel and urinary function, the same thing is true for a sexual function. And what many men notice, certainly from an erectile function point of view, is that although erections can persist during the course of radiotherapy, there is a gradual change with time and erections decline in the months and years following surgery. Now, I should say that many men still today do require hormone therapy or androgen deprivation therapy in combination with their radiation, depending on their disease profile. Now, if you have hormone therapy, that will reduce your libido. It will give you erectile dysfunction, as well as potentially hot flushes, weight gain, what's called tender gynecomastia or tender swollen breast tissues. So if you do have hormone therapy, sexual function will go more immediately. However, if you don't, then your erections will persist to begin with, but have a high probability of declining with time. The other thing that happens to the prostate following radiotherapy is it becomes shrunken and fibrotic and scarred, and therefore many men actually have either a reduced ejaculate volume if they are still having sex with time, and they emit less fluid when they have an orgasm. Sometimes men emit no fluid at all. So in addition to changes in erectile function, men can experience changes in ejaculatory function. And many men can report that they feel as if the quality of their orgasm isn't what it used to be. It can be shorter, it can be less intense, and it can be less pleasurable. So those are three reasons why radiation treatment may not be appropriate for you. But ultimately, you need to decide in combination with discussions with your treating urologist. Radiation is not an ideal treatment choice for younger men who have a longer life expectancy for some of the reasons that I've highlighted today. But there are other reasons beyond the scope of this video as well. Certainly, if men have pre-existing urinary issues, perhaps a large prostate with significant bladder symptoms, or maybe they've got inflammatory bowel disease such as ulcerative colitis, or alternatively, if men like the consideration of being amenable to a salvage option, these men need to look at alternative ways to treat their prostate cancer primarily. Okay, so the key takeaway points from the discussion today. Radiation is very effective at treating men's prostate cancer and is certainly the correct choice for many men with this disease. But it's important to be aware that number one, side effects can be delayed, problems can be progressive, and it can limit future salvage treatment options. 
As always, if you get benefit, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you want to know more about your prostate, have a look at this video or alternatively this video here. Until the next time, take care of your prostate.